if you talk about natural systems as a form giver to cities, which it is, river systems and floodplains and so on, you've got to talk at policy level because it's, it's the policy appropriateness of, of being able to set aside floodplains and have the regulatory help to make it happen. You've got to talk about something pretty big. Natural systems are big. Therefore, planning has a, a really good start at the natural system end, which then coincides with other infrastructure systems at the policy level. Now you're beginning to get into the design setup if you can get those things straightened out at that level of scale in a community, I call it getting the framework set, then you're beginning to prepare places for devoted, appropriate design articulation. I think unless you do that, uh, design can come in places where it's I irrelevant to the next piece of design. It has no fabric that joins it all together. Framework comes from the planning mindset, I think if you can talk about planning as a large-scale point of view. And framework then sets up the design opportunities much more strongly than, than not. When they work together, it's the richness of uh, feedback. Um, the tendency is to do either or, but they're best when they're seen together as opposed to separate entities. It's interesting to note that landscape architecture has had a great uh, uh, sense of the large picture over the years. Coming out of the Beaux-Arts, the, uh, there was a lot of big scale stuff going on. Look at the Olmsted thinking. There was no distinction of little or big. It was what is appropriate at any scale. The narrowness that may be referred to in, in the pointing out of a conflict by Newton and others emerged it emerged in shortly after World War II. Maybe it was because we were so interested in the art of it all, the form, the beautiful things that Ekbo expressed. And that was a lot of the teaching of the 50s. Get to the end point, get to the form and the beauty of abstract patterns, how they join and, and so on. I think we lost something there from the past in the field and I think it's maybe regained now in, in probably a much more appropriate way than even in the 20s and 30s when that large-scale thinking was going on. It's improved, but landscape architecture isn't small because it relates to plants and plant materials. It's not small. It's probably one of the largest points of views among the design fields that we have. I love that notion of no limits on scale. And it's only because that's the nature of natural systems. It's global. Why not look at a whole eastern seaboard as, a, as a, a legitimate way to think about the future of pieces within the seaboard? That's the way to get at it.